I'll mention as we go, but I want to start this month just doing a kind of an analysis of the sun signs in a different way. Now, I know you've all read and heard and lots of videos on the sun signs. You've had many <laughs> people in your life, so you know firsthand about certain signs. And so today I want to talk a little bit about just kind of dealing with each sign and, and maybe more of an everyday perspective. You know, we, we have mythological backgrounds and we have, we understand, you know, the planetary backgrounds. And I will touch on those throughout these videos. But I want this to be, this particular video series for March, to be just more us talking and, um, and getting a feel for how to look at and prepare yourself in dealing with different signs. Again, especially those of you who want to use astrology in your everyday life or teach astrology or become an astrologer, you have to know who you're talking to, okay? You have to know who you're talking to in everyday life. So let's get started with Aries, all right? Let's just dive in here, okay? We know that Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. We know Aries is ruled by Mars. So we know it's extremely fiery. It's a fire sign. It's the warrior, okay? We see Aries in military and police force, fire departments. Aries have fascination with things like fire and breaking glass and guns, okay? Um, it's a dominant male sign, so a lot of times when we see Aries women, they're the number one athletes. They're extremely athletic um, and often can have a, you know, a competitive spirit even against men. I mean, they have no problem competing. They love to compete, does men or women. Um, the same with a man. We see the motorcycle rider. We see off-roading. We see the big red truck, right? We see this person that needs to say, I am here. Because, because Aries rules identity. It's, it's the beginning. It's where we see our ascendant, our rising sign. It's the head. It rules the head. And so a lot of times with Aries, they're going to hit their heads a lot, especially as kids. Or maybe have come in life through a difficult birth. Not uncommon for Aries. Caesareans um, is not uncommon. Um, you know, teeth, teeth can have teeth problems, knock out teeth, <laughs> all right, anything that has to do with the head. So, um, let me get in, dab in a little bit to medical astrology, where you see headaches, and the adrenal gland, okay, is ruled by Aries, so that's why they are so quick to ignite emotionally, okay, so quick to ignite with passion, and it's just like, phew, you know, when you light up an Aries. Now, we also see, because this is the first sign of the zodiac, this is the childlike sign. It's the, the time frame between zero to seven, okay? So many times when we look at adult Aries, we see this totally childlike, fun personality. They love kids. They love to take all the kids and go give them their first motorcycle ride or take them four-wheeling, shock them a little bit, right? This is somebody that, you know, you're not going to tell no to because they have this strong will and need that Mars energy, remember, to compete with anything. So if you, you know, if you ask an Aries something, their first trigger, you know, hey, can you help me? Hey, can you do something for me? It's not that they're necessarily selfish, which sometimes they get that bad rap for of just being so self into their self that they're not seeing anything else around them. But what it is, is there's something inside of them that as they're getting asked a command, <laughs> okay, of any kind, which, which comes through like a command, can you help me? Can you go do this? Can you, you know, even as children, get your room cleaned up, the trigger automatically comes in to... Uh, the warrior, uh, the defense, uh, let me make sure that's something I want to do. You know, I didn't have that idea. So often it is kind of can be this, this childlike mentality. Okay. Now I want to say, <laughs> because I want to be able to be really honest that when I'm talking about the signs, as we go deeper into them, 
I'm not talking to any one person because I'm going to talk about my signs too and I'm going to be really honest. The things that we deal with because we embody this energy. I'm really talking about an energy. And we all go through stages in our life where we're living at, you know, different stages and different levels of that energy. As we mature and as we grow and as we become more wise, then, yeah, you know, it's, it'd be pretty cool to be able to kind of have reign over this energy and control it. So, again, if you are, I'm talking to the signs and you feel like, oh, she's talking to me. No, I'm talking about what all Aries go through, what all Tauruses could potentially go through. Okay, this is like the universal plan. I didn't create the planets. <laughs> I didn't make this happen. And I look at myself, and I try to do this with humor. So let's laugh. Let's not, I'm not here to beat up any sign. I just know when I'm walking into a relationship with a particular sign, what I have to do to make that work, okay, and be careful of. So again, for an example, as we talk about the Aries, I know if I want to be a brat, <laughs> if I want to be a brat to my Aries, I'm going to challenge them. I'm going to throw a little dig in there to compete with them. And I can see them get all, <laughs> get all riled up. And so, you know, we, we know that, right? We, we know how to have fun with it. But at the same time, if I genuinely want to bring out the best in a sign, talking about the Aries as we speak, I'm going to use that side of them to bring out the best in them. So I'm going to give you an example. So <clears throat> all of my kids have a lot of Aries, like everyone around me. I am just saturated in Aries. They keep me on my toes. I mean, they don't let me slide off at all because I'm going to keep up with them. So uh, my son is an Aries. He actually has Sun, Mercury, Venus in Aries. So there's a lot of Aries. And he recently had... Uh, he had a little girl. He had a child. Okay. He has a, he has a little boy too, but this little baby, um, little girl. And unfortunately him and his, the baby's mama did split. So it was really a difficult time for everyone involved because it was so critical that the baby got to bond with both parents, at least in my, in my, um, opinion. And, I mean, everybody's opinion would be that. But, you know, I felt very, very passionate about it. And so, you know, you can't always fix everything, but you can look to see what it is you can do. What is the most important thing? The most important thing is this little baby. So my son's been at our house on the days he has the baby just to have a little. She's been only, like, we've had her since, you know, six weeks to, like, now she's eight months, you know, every other weekend. And. I know that's got to be hard on a little baby, so I want to make it as best I can for that baby as a grandmother, right? We're just talking, right? So, um, my son's in Aries, and I really wanted him to bond with her. So I knew, okay, I knew that if I showed her a lot of attention, which I would have done anyway, but I knew if I show her a lot of attention, it's going to ignite his need to come over and get in the attention with her, that that's his little special, you know, this is his, it's, it, it'll ignite that protectiveness over her, that need to be, you know, have her smile more at him than he does me, so I secretly want that from him, so by me, oh look, she's smiling at me, I know he's going to have to come over, because he's an Aries, and get a better smile than I just got. But see, I'm sneaky as a grandmother because that's what I want. I want them to have that bond. So am I manipulating the Aries? Am I, am I bringing out the best? Am I triggering a little bit of their competitive instinct to come and now participate in life? Now, the opposite of that would be if I secretly wanted the baby to love me more than her dad. Okay, now let's just say... That's out there, okay? People do that. I don't know. But how would I go about that? I could be telling them, look, she likes me more than you. She only smiles at me. She doesn't even smile at you. She only likes me. Now, that would trigger an Aries to a full war, 
<laughs> okay, why? Because they they need to feel first. They need to feel loved. They have that need to feel wanted and appreciated. Okay, and to be right there in the center of the attention. So I just want you guys to see that when I'm working with the signs, whether it's my children, my clients, relationships, friendships, I say to myself, do I want to bring out the best in this person or do I want to bring out the worst? Because we all have the power. And knowing astrology, I truly, truly believe it's very, very important that we understand it's not a tool to be used against anybody by knowing what might trigger someone. That is actually totally unethical in the spiritual laws, okay? Now, does that mean that if somebody's acting really crazy and we look at their chart and we can say, ooh, that's the crazy side of this Aries, uh, yikes, okay? Because it can get crazy. When an Aries is off balance, they're just, um, it's kind of, even though it's a, even though it's the ram, okay, the ram is a prey animal. The Aries is actually a prey animal where the Leo is actually a lion, a predator, okay? The Aries, but at the same time, there's a lone wolf. There's this almost wolf vibe. And I think it be, can become the, the Aries, the wolf in sheep's clothing, okay? the Aries that now is defensive and out to get everyone. And if I can't have the attention, neither can you. Um, or if I can't get good attention, I'll get bad attention because I just want attention. This goes on the other extreme, right, of, of people that have no clue that are just spiraling in this raw Aries energy. So as we're learning to master these energies, we say to ourselves, Hey, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm a leader. I'm a starter. I'm funny. I got, I'm the one igniting all the energy around everyone. Otherwise, nobody would get anything done. Nobody would do anything. Have to have your Aries in your life. They push you. They compete with you. They drive you crazy, but you have to have them because you get stuff done. You know, you get stuff done with an Aries around. They ignite you. And, you know, Aries, you know, when they get depressed or when they get down is when the energy is flat, when they feel isolated, okay? Because, again, when we look at, say, the ram, okay, the billy goat, all right, as a child, I call the little Aries little goat, little billy goat, um, developing into this ram that stands on the mountain with these protective horns, you know, it's a beautiful picture, Um you know, when, when, when they can't light that energy, when they're stopped on every corner, when they're taken down, Aries can go into a very deep depression. Um, and again, anger and bitterness and those things can stir up. Um, and, you know, they can create, you know, drama <laughs> just because they can't stand the quietness inside where a water sign, and we'll get into that more, may really love that quiet time. And Aries is very uncomfortable with that, okay? It's very uncomfortable. So this is just the beginning. I'm going to go through all the signs, talk about 10 minutes each one just to get the conversation started with us. I will be going deeper as far as houses and all of those things, we'll, I'll have videos that are a lot more structured. But this series right now, I just kind of want to get the vibe, get the energy going that we'll be talking about on a real level. All right, you guys, stay tuned for Taurus. Taurus.